Hey, Jody here. We're talking about TIG welders today, TIG welding machines. And, and the reason is that I get this question all the time. What's a good TIG welder for me to buy as a beginner? Or I've got this little basic TIG welder and I want to up my game and my budget is $1,800 or $2,000. What's the best What's the best value? What's the best welder for me? So it's very hard to answer those questions because it really depends on so many things. It depends on what you're going to do with it, what kind of power power you have in your garage or your shop, these kind of things. So I want to kick off a little series here talking about several different TIG welding machines, at least 11 or 12 different ones that I've welded with over the past couple of years. Today I'm going to start this little series by talking about scratch start TIG, the most basic setup and then lift arc TIG with the small inverter machines, lift arc TIG with a multi-process machine, and high frequency start DC TIG machines. And then in next week's video, we'll get into the AC DC basic machines and then move on to the full featured machines with all the bells and whistles, AC frequency, AC balance, pulse, and, and all that stuff. And, and we'll talk about all of that in detail as we go. And a little heads up here, there's going to be a giveaway along the way somewhere. I'm going to give away an ACDC TIG welder, and you're going to want to stay tuned so that you can learn how to be eligible for that. All right, let's dive in today. One of the most basic TIG welding setups is air-cooled scratch start TIG, and you basically just use almost any DC power source, any DC stick welder, and hook up a TIG torch to it along with a bottle of argon and flow meters, and you're ready to go. Now this might be a good way to go for somebody that already has a DC stick welder where you don't have to you know, spend money on that. And then you might get started TIG welding a little cheaper. But if you have to buy the stick welder, probably not the best way to go. If you do go this way, this TIG adapter block makes things really easy. Or what kind of stuff can you weld with a scratch start TIG like this? Well, a lot of handrails are welded like this. And the good thing about a scratch start TIG is it's so simple and so durable and so portable you don't have a foot pedal to worry about so as you're walking around something like this or changing your balance when you're doing a 6G test like this you don't have to worry about that foot pedal it frees you up to stand and move around move your feet around and it is actually used a lot for sanitary stainless steel piping like this the the the, the challenge is snapping out of the puddle and, and maintaining some kind of coverage and then having to clean it off afterwards. But the main thing with sanitary piping is the inside, making sure the inside is purged with no cavities or no problems where bacteria might grow. All right, another thing is just any open root pass. Now this is a plate, not that commonly done, but it's good. it is done for practice when you're getting ready to take a pipe test. And it works really good for open root passes like this. This is a technique that I like to use doing a forward and back with a lay wire, one eighth wire, one eighth gap. You just have to figure out how to snap out of the puddle. All right, another inexpensive way to get started TIG welding is with a small lift arc TIG welder like this small inverter. This is a Everlast 140 ST. It's dual voltage. It will run off a 20 amp breaker on 115 and a 30 on 230 volt. Weighs about 15 pounds and comes with TIG torch and flow meter. So what can you do with this a welder like this? Well, if you were practicing to pass a welding test, like a 6G pipe like this, it would be just fine because you know you typically don't need less than 140 amps for root and hot pass and fill passes on a joint like this. And also, since it does stick welding too, it'll burn a 7018 really well. It would be a good option for practicing for a 6G test. Another thing is just light fabrication. This is some inch and a half square tubing, eighth inch wall. A Harbor Freight copper spoon like this for about 10 bucks really is a handy tool for a scratch start and lift start TIG. It just provides you a way to leave a puddle without completely losing gas coverage and, and maybe leaving a crater or fish eye or something like that. So like a joint like this, I would set it right next to the bead and it kind of actually helps to trap a little argon there also. And then when you get to the end and you're ready to trail out, you just move over to the copper spoon, let the puddle solidify while you get a little bit of gas coverage and then snap out. Scratch start and lift arc, not nearly as good as having a foot pedal most of the time, but not too bad, actually. All right, this little unit's a AHP 160 ST. It does lift arc TIG and stick. And it's actually become a favorite little machine of my friend JD. He's got it now, but I'm doing a little practicing here with root pass as well as hot pass. And it's got a mighty smooth arc and runs a 7018 like a champ, too. Again, this would be a great machine for practicing to pass a welding test. 
All right, here's JD using it, fabricating part of a mezzanine. Oh, let's, what's over there? I don't know. Let me look back to welding here now. <laughs> like I said, it does stick also, so you can put the machine right at the location, set the amperage, not have to run long leads. And also, it's a dual voltage machine with a little pigtail, so you can run 115 or 230. All right, let's talk about an Everlast 160 STH. Now we're getting into high frequency start here. 160 amps machine. This one's got post flow adjustment and it's also foot pedal capable. So you can run a foot pedal off of it. The foot pedal is not included in the price, but is fairly inexpensive for, for a foot pedal for this one. And here I'm building a little, uh, little project, a little hammer. And this wound up being a favorite hammer in the machine shop that I worked at for quite a few years. And my machinist buddy uses it all the time to bump parts around on when he's setting them up in the lathe and things like that. I overlaid the ends with silicon bronze so he'd have a, a bronze face to tap on parts with. And then just for kicks, I got some stick welding practice, made a handle like that just with buildup of 7018 beads. Again, it became a, a favorite little hammer in that shop. Just a quick little project using that machine. Now, high frequency kind of steps you up into a whole nother game. It, it lets you do a lot more little small parts. And one example here is just a little hole fill. This is a very common operation that you could do for doing work for machine shops. Being able to start without touching it just helps your electrodes last longer. You don't risk contaminating anything. Leaving a, a piece of an electrode for a, a tool bit to hang on if it's being remachined afterwards. And being able to taper off and not leave any kind of a, a defect is a big benefit. Now this little machine is a lift arc TIG stick and MIG welder. It's a Lincoln 210 MP. It's quite a bit more than any of the other machines I've shown here today. It's strictly a DC TIG welder that does MIG and stick. And so what, what would you do with this machine? Well, I've done some socket welds with it and without a foot pedal and it worked out really well just using the lift arc function. So I'm going to show just a little bit of that. Socket welds typically are done in at least two passes, so typically the codes pr prevent doing only one pass on them. So we'll do a little root pass here, and then I'm going to come across it with a, a second pass in just a minute. And I'm walking the cup here for the first pass, and I'll do a little bit of free handing, which is very common on, on small joints like this, especially when there, there's not access. If there's another pipe right next to it, you just can't walk the cup. you got to figure out how to free hand. And then snapping out is the main ticket, but just hitting, hitting it with a file when you're done, snapping out usually takes care of that. Here's a little shot of walking the cup, pretty much same ramp, amperage, same machine, and all that stuff. JD uses the Lincoln 210 MP a lot uh, on site as well as in his fab shop. Here he's putting a root pass in a, a slip flange. And here he's going to be putting in a root pass in an open butt pipe joint using about a 5.30 second gap with a 1 8 rod and about 80 to 90 amps just walking over the rod like that tying it in that's JD's technique anyway and then coming across that with a, a hot pass just about 10 or 20 amps hotter and then after that because this machine does multi-process he's using dual shield 71M flux core for the fill and cap pass so root, hot pass, a second pass with the flux core like this, and then coming across uh, on top of that with one more pass of that 71M. We'll wrap that joint up in probably about an hour. And it looks just about like it was done with the 7018 when it's finished. Remember to hang with me through this little series here. I'm going to try to button it up in two or three videos. We'll see what happens, but stay tuned. We'll see you next time.